Hello, my name is Brian Richardson with Canfield Air Pollution Control. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on your purchase of your new Gold Series dust collector. Um, I'd like to cover three main aspects of that dust collector with you today. Things such as the startup procedures, the operations of the collector, and also some maintenance items that you may run into in the future. Um, I would recommend watching this video in its entirety so that you're comfortable with all the information that I provide. Once you get ready to go through the process of standing your dust collector up and putting it into place, once you take it off the truck, you want to make sure that you've got anything that is connecting it to the pallet removed, such as the strapping, the shrink wrap material, or any other crating material. Once you get to the point to where you want to stand your dust collector up, you want to make sure that all your crating material is removed and out of the way, and you want to start the process of connecting your crane to all four lifting points on the dust collector as shown. And you want to make sure that all the four connection points on the top of the dust collector are connected to the crane. And you want to make sure that all four chains are the same length. Pretty smooth. Your new GSP dust collector is going to come as a fully packaged unit. What that means is everything's intact. All you've really got to do is hook up your ductwork and your electricity, turn it on, and it's ready to go. But once you get it out of the crate and off the pallet, there's several things you want to check to make sure there's no shipping damage. One of them being the damper on the back to make sure the adjustment handle's not bent or broken. Uh, you want to check your filter regulator to make sure the, the uh, muffler and the gauges are still intact like they should be. You want to check the controller face to make sure all your buttons and knobs and screens are still intact. Uh, check all your hose connections, your smoke detector option. Um, you also want to check your hoses and your connection fittings at those points where it goes into the dust collector to make sure nothing's ripped or tore loose. Um, come around to the front of the dust collector, you also want to check the hoses and the fittings going into the front of the diaphragm valves and make sure there's nothing wrong there. And probably one of the main things you need to do is just open the door and take a quick look at your filters to make sure that they're not damaged from the shipping process. Now we've come to the point where it's time to register for your 12-year warranty. There are two ways you can go about this. One of them is to scan the QR code on the front of your door tag. The other is to follow the link below. One of the bonuses for registering is that you are provided with a free spare parts kit. And there's also a place on the back of the tag where you follow instructions to sign up for a free hemiplate filter. I want to talk to you about a couple of key points that you need to go over on your dust collector before you actually start it up on your process. Um, once you get your main air popped into the dust collector, you want to make sure that the filter regulator is set at a 90 to 100 PSI max setting for the cleaning system. That filter regulator is adjustable with this knob just on top of the regulator right here that you see. Um, the next thing is, is you want to make sure that your sprinkler system is connected to a water source. Uh, you have a one inch MPT connection here on the back of the dust collector or the side of the dust collector depending on what size it is. What it does is it works in conjunction with a smoke detecting system so that if you do have a fire or an event inside the dust collector, it will shut the blower off and also put the fire out so that you don't have a major fire event at that point. One of the last items you need to check before actually starting your dust collector up on the process is the slide gate damper point. You want to make sure that it's at the startup position that's shown on the side. Now what this does, that puts the dust collector at a minimum airflow, so that when you do actually start the dust collector up on the process, you have a place to start with whenever you're getting the actual operation setting. The key thing you're trying to do with this dust collector once you start it up is to remove the smoke or fumes from the process that you're dealing with. So what you're going to do, you're going to come over here you're going to loosen this knob up, you're going to start your machine, and you're going to see dust and fumes created at that point. Um, what you want to do from there is actually open the damper up until you see the dust or fumes disappear from that process. And at that point, that's where you need to set it for permanent operation for a shorter period of time until the dust collector gets a dust cake on the filters. One of the other items I'd like to talk to you about is the integrated controller on the side of your Gold Series package unit. Uh, this box contains everything it takes to control all of the options that would be on the collector. And I just want to kind of cover some of those options with you and what the switches mean, what they are, and then also go over the settings and what the difference a pressure meter does for what the collector's operation requires. 
One of the first items that you'll see on the front of the box is the main power switch. Before turning that on, you just want to confirm that your integrated controller is plugged into the correct voltage for operation. Um, just a simple turn it on and off connection. Uh, the next item that you'll see is a smoke detector indicator light. That is, if, that will tell you that if the smoke detector has been activated, uh, this light will uh, notify you of that. And then you have a blower running indicator light, which is the green light that you see here. One of the next items you'll see is the blower mode indicator switch or the selection switch. You have two settings on that, one of them being the remote setting. And what that one does is that the process equipment is turned on at this setting. That means your dust collector would come on at the same time as that process equipment. Uh, the other setting is a manual setting. And that just means you walk over and turn the blower on whenever you need it. And just above the blower mode setting switch, you have what they call the cleaning mode options. Um, there's two options on this switch. One of them will be automatic clean. That one operates off the differential pressure settings that you have built into your meter up here, and I'll cover that a little bit more in a second. Uh, the other one is a manual setting, and once you turn that on, it pulses every 15 seconds as long as that switch is on, and doesn't quit until you turn that switch off. The next item that you'll notice on the front of your integrated controller is the differential pressure meter. Uh, this meter reads the difference of pressure between the clean side of the filter and the dirty side of the filter. And based off of the readings that it gets from that, it sends a signal to the automatic option selection on your cleaning mode and tells the cleaning system when to kick on and kick off and stop cleaning your filters and start cleaning your filters. Okay. One of the next things I'd like to cover with you is the differential pressure meter settings, what each one of those means and how to go in and set and change those as needed. Uh, if you'll press the green set button for two seconds, the meter will go into programming mode and the first indicator light that you see flashing will be the high alarm set point as you see here. Um, that number right there tells you that if the filters get to a point where they will not clean below that and the differential pressure uh, reading stays above it, that it's time for new filters. Um, you can adjust that up and down with the arrows on the, the left and the right of the green set button. Uh, you hit the button one more time and the, the flashing light that you see now is the low set point. You press it one more time and you have the high set point. Both of those numbers are also adjustable with the up and down arrows that you see on the left and right of the set button. Um, these, these are set to the factory default, which, is, which works pretty well for just about any dry dust on average. Um, there will be times for things such as metal dust where this number will need to be adjusted higher over time. Um, you know, they may top out in the three to three and a half inch range. Okay, from the high set point, hit the button one more time, and it goes into the units that you want displayed on the front of the meter. Uh, that can be in inches or it can be in pascals. You hit the set point button one more time. It puts you into a uh, point where you can set a three-digit security code that will keep someone out of the meter and changing the settings when you weren't around. You hit the button one more time, and it, you come to the calibration setting. Um, you want to make sure that your meter is calibrated to zero when your blower's not running or after you've went in and changed some of the settings. So what you do is you go to this setting, and you hold the up and down arrow concurrently at the same time until the uh, Dis display quits flashing. Button one more time and so you're calibrated to zero at that point. I want to cover a couple of maintenance items with you about your new GSP dust collector. Uh, one of the main things is, is at some point you'll have to change out filters uh, to a new filter as opposed to the old filter that you've got in place that's not operating properly anymore. It's just a simple matter of opening the door for access. You're going to disengage the clamp bars as shown and remove the filter. It's got a nice handle in the front of the pan here for you to pull it out with. On dust collectors that are larger, that are more than two filters deep, there's a filter removal pole available that will help you get to those filters in the back. The goal is to make it as maintenance free as possible and we do not want someone to have to get in the dust collector to be able to remove a filter. Um, once you get the new filters in place, you'll basically pick it up, slide it back into the, the filter hold rails, and re-engage your clamp bars as shown. One other item I'd like to cover with you real quick is there's a PAMIC filter that is inside of the dust collector here that is actually keeping the line clear, the differential pressure line clear that's going to the controller free of dust so that it operates properly. Um, when you change out new filters and you've got the door it's all open, it's always a good idea just to 
remove that filter and check it to make sure it's clean. Uh, simply tap it on the side just to make sure all the dust gets knocked out of it. Make sure you don't have any dust entrained into the pleats itself and just reinstall it onto the threads. And you should be good to go. Uh, one more maintenance item I'd like to cover with you is, is the uh, opening and closing of the dust drawer system. Uh, at some point in your process, you're going to get to the point where that drawer is going to fill up with the dust or the fume to the point where it needs to be disposed of. So it's a simple matter of just putting your boot or shoe underneath the handle, lifting it up to the lock point. Then you'll reach down, slide your dust drawer out. You'll dispose of the dust in a proper manner. And then you simply slide the drawer back in, re-engage the handle. One other thing that you want to check is the small filter that's inside the filter regulator reservoir. There's a little filter inside this reservoir that keeps the debris and fluids from getting into the main tank for the cleaning system. What you do is you pull the lever down, twist and pull, removes the reservoir bulb, screw the little black knob off here and then the filter check. You can check the filter. If it needs a new clean filter, you just basically just go back through the same process in reverse, reinstall. Reinstall your reservoir bulb and it's good to go. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about how to operate your Gold Series dust collector properly. Always remember to dampen your collector, start up, progressively open that damper as your process begins, and set your differential pressure settings along with that so that you achieve the goal of removing dust and fumes from your process. If you do that, your filters will last a long time with very little maintenance. And remember, our aftermarket department can provide you with any parts that you will ever need. Um, also, if you run into any technical service questions, please call our technical service assistance number, which is located on the front of the dust collector controller. My name is Brian Richardson, and we hope that you enjoy your Fargo Series dust collectors.